For this one, I'm going to show you how to stream or record with two PCs without using a capture card. We'll be using a free OBS plugin called OBS NDI. It's easy to install and easy to set up for OBS Studio. So let's begin. What you'll need is OBS Studio. You'll need OBS NDI plugin and you'll also need two Ethernet cables. With this, any type of Ethernet cable works, but preferably, if you can, it is better to get the more faster ones. For example, like the Cat8 ones, I'll put a link in the description to download links if you want to buy them. How all of this works is you have your main PC and you have your second PC. Both will be connected to your router with the Ethernet cables. The way that OBS NDI works is by using your own IP. It will tell your main output to send the video and audio over to your router. Then the router will send the data to your second system, which will pretty much mirror your main system onto your second. So from there, you can start to stream or record. This will then take the pressure off your main PC and put it onto the second system, allowing your main PC to have maximum performance when it comes to games or desktop. So that's pretty much how it works. First thing you wanna do is go ahead and scroll down into the description down below to the two links, which will take you to OBS and OBS NDI. If you already have OBS, then that's great. You can just simply move on to the second link, which is going to be OBS NDI. In here, you wanna go ahead and click on the download button, which is right here which will take you to another page. You also want to make sure that you do this for both systems. Now on this page right here, you'll have the update releases. And if you wanted to, you can use the latest one, which is 4.9.1. I've not really used this one myself, but the one that works really well for me is 4.9.0. I found out that this one is really good. So you want to scroll down to the links right here and you want to go to the right one, which is the windows installer.exe. So it's this one right here. So once you've got yourself the installation file, you want to go ahead and open it up as normal. Of course, read through the information about it and click on next. Choose the location where you want to save it, then go ahead and click on next. The folder is still there from the previous version, so I'm just going to pretty much replace it. So click on next. If you want to create a shortcut, click on next, click on install. Of course, you also want to make sure you install the NDI for runtime. This is really important and you want to go ahead and click on accept and click on next and click on next. Once again, I'm going to replace it. And finally, you want to go ahead and install it. And there we go. So we're going to click on finish and finish again. And now you want to restart your OBS. Once you've restarted OBS, you can go to tools and you'll see something called NDI output settings. In here, you want to open this up and you want to go ahead and select this one as your main output. So you want to call this one something that is rememberable or anything that you want really. You want to untick the preview output and every time that you want to pretty much turn this into the host, you want to tick the one that will say main output. Now, another great thing about OBS NDI is that it lets you have your main or your native resolution on your PC. So for example, my laptop can run at 1080p and my PC can run at 4K. Now I don't have to downscale the PC. So if I go into settings and go into video, you can see that I have it at 3840 times 2160. Now that we are onto the second PC, you wanna make sure that first of all, you have both your systems plugged in with the ethernet cable. Second of all, you wanna make sure that you have OBS open on both your systems at the same time. And of course, the very last one, this is the most important one, and this is why for me it didn't work the first time I tried it. Your firewall and antivirus will act up as if there is something suspicious going on. So you'll need to either go ahead and open up your antivirus and pretty much pause the protection and also pause firewall. If you don't do this, then it's not really going to work. You're just going to get a black screen and there's going to be no source whatsoever. So we're going to go ahead and pause the protection. 
So if you're going to normally do it and you don't have an antivirus, you would go to search, type in firewall, and then you would go to the one that will say check firewall status. In here, you would go to turn Windows Defender firewall on or off. Now you can open OBS. So now what you want to do is you want to go up to tools and you want to make sure that you see the option which will say NDI output settings. Now we want to open this up and for this one, you want to leave it as normal. You don't want it to be main and you don't want it to be preview. So just leave everything as normal and click on OK. Now to actually add the source, all we have to do is right click in here and go to add and get yourself the one that will say NDI source. In here, you can call this anything you want. So I'm going to call this PC Atlas and go ahead and press OK. So now that you've followed the most important steps, you can now click on the source name and click on the down arrow and you will see that you have your main desktop PC. So like I said, if you don't see this, then it would either be your firewall, antivirus, or you've not got both your systems plugged in with the Ethernet cable. So now we can select the host which is going to be our main PC. The settings that you want to apply is going to be highest for the bandwidth. The source timing is going to be on network and you want to go ahead and select the partial range for the colors and set it on BT 709. And for the latency, you want to set this one to low. All you have to do now is press okay. And you will now see that this has picked up our desktop. Now, since we left it at 4K, we just have to downscale this. So everything that we can see on desktop is going to be displayed right here. And anything that we do is going to be pretty much displayed as the source. Now, you'll also notice if you go into the audio mixer that there is a new PC Atlas one that has been created. So there is two important things that you need to know about how this works. The first thing is any type of desktop audio coming from your PC one is going to come from this bit right here. So the PC Atlas. Second of all is anything related to streaming or recording, you're going to do it onto your second PC. So for example, if you were going to stream and you had things like a webcam, a microphone, and you had things like overlays, you would have to do it onto your second PC. Same goes for the settings as well. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you thought of this video. And yeah, as always, I will see you all in the next video. Bye.